everybody and welcome to the Wild Wahine. This is Keilani coming to you this week with today's um, and this upcoming week's astro forecast. So thank you for joining live. And if you don't catch this live right now, it will be um, on the replay. Hi, Soul Healing with Roz. Thanks for joining today um, on my IGTV. So let's talk about a shift in energy, which is going to feel really good. Um, for us, it started yesterday with um, Mercury moving into Sagittarius. It has been in Scorpio, um, you know, for the last three weeks. So that has been like interesting in terms of communication and how we communicate with each other a little bit hot because of Mars <laughs> is ruled by Scorpio. So um, now that it's moving into Sagittarius, I think we're going to be in this place where um, we're really dealing with very big ideas and communicating um, in a very like large scale way, essentially like painting with a very broad uh, brushstroke. So I think this is like going to be a really good time to talk. And one thing is, which is interesting to me, because yesterday I had several meetings online and I was talking with a few friends yesterday and all of us were talking about like what our plans were and what our goals were and, you know, the things that we learned this year and what we're taking into 2021 and how we've shifted and how we've shifted our businesses. And, and a lot of it wasn't so much about the details, but it was really about like large scale things like, you know, I'm taking my business and moving it into this or these are the next big projects that I'm working on. So those kinds of conversations this is a great time to have it um, right now because mercury is in Sagittarius and Sagittarius is all about um, the broad picture all about like optimism it's really kind of lifting our spirits from a kind of heavy place that we've been in for a lot of 2020 it's not over yet because Jupiter um, which is the ruler of Sagittarius is still in Capricorn so it's still debilitated it's still not giving its full umph I would say in terms of like all of the optimism and all of the good luck but it still is a shift and we're kind of starting to feel that energy right now it's going to completely shift into um, Aquarius on the 19th but it's not going to be in Aquarius before we finish this Mercury and Sag season so Sag is going to be a little bit debilitated it won't be as big and bright and extra as it usually is but it's still, still going to bring in that energy and it's so it's still going to want you to uh, communicate about those larger ideas. And also um, there's an aspect of Sagittarius, which in a lot of ways to me is similar to Scorpio. But um, I, where I think Scorpio is a little bit more intuitive in terms of saying the thing that stings, it's, it's, kind, it's the truth, but it doesn't come from a necessarily malicious space. It comes from a, I want to get to the truth and I'm trying to create the truth. Where Sag, not coming from a malicious space, but just coming from a space of like, Oh, I can't believe I just said that. There's a lot of uh ohs, a lot of like that just rolled out of my mouth, verbal diarrhea, some people like to call it. So there's a bluntness um, to, you know, Sagittarian energy, just kind of speaking the truth and saying it. And without like a lot of, you know, consideration about like, who the audience is and was this an appropriate time to say it so you know if you're the type of person who kind of has been told that you don't have a good sensor or that you can be a little blunt or a little curt you want to be a little extra careful during this time because you know <laughs> that's the energy that we have right now so you can still speak your truth and i had like posted something this morning about speaking truth is that something that's really important but i guess you want to also ask yourself why that is why is it that you're you're saying what it is that you're saying are you saying the truth to free yourself and that's another thing with you know big sagittarius energy it's all about freedom and it's like the freedom of the voice the freedom of our actions and taking um what we say and actually putting some action behind it or being inspired by what we hear or even in inspiring ourselves by what we say and taking that into action because Sagittarius is a fire sign. So a couple a couple of like key things to think about during this time, like I said, it's big picture time. It's time to really be thinking about your really large goals. Um, what are the two things, if you can distill it, because we have all learned many things in 2020. It's like like a list, a list, it's like Santa's list of things we've learned. But if you could distill like, you know, what are the top two to three things that were most impactful this year? Um, what are the things that has changed you? What are the things that you're doing that you really want to let go and like, okay, that was 2020 and now I'm moving into, you know, this 2021 energy. Um, and what are the things that you want to bring with you and what are the things that you're leaving? 
leaving behind? And what are some of the things that you want to cultivate on a large scale, on a philosophical scale? Because Sag rules that kind of energy of philosophy and also like um, religion and spirituality and self-help and, you know, like kind of standing up and saying like, this is what I believe in and this is why and these are the actions that I'm going to take and I'm going to communicate these really broad ideas. So all of like the gurus and the sages and like your wise aunt and your wise tutu or grandmother, you know, anybody that has that kind of wisdom in your life. And it really doesn't have to be an age. You know, a lot of times when my son was younger, he would just like look at things and, you know, as a child in a very simplistic way. And there was so much truth in that. So do understand that wisdom doesn't necessarily have to come from age. Age is kind of this experience that you have that you're drawing your wisdom from. But young people have this very simplistic way of looking at things. Like even if you think about like how tall they are, they see at a certain point when they're short, they see the world from like here, you know, and so when you're kind of when you have a different perspective, you see things in a different way. And I think that's like one of the things that you can learn from. So understand that your sages and your wise people are all over and you can learn so many things. I mean, you know, a lot of the big gurus would just sit out in nature, which is another Sagittarian thing, getting out into the great outdoors. And I know for some of you, it's cold in Hawaii. Obviously, it's warm here. But, you know, if you can spend some time outside, getting your wisdom from outside, sometimes that just quiets the mind enough so that you can hear things come through. So that's another thing. Um, So we're also talking about like optimism, you know, kind of like uh, uh, you know, pushing your energy up a little bit more because it's been in a little bit more depressive state or kind of more, you know, inside the cave as we're coming out of the, the, you know, finally coming out of some of the Scorpio energy, which is very internal, very like deep water, digging really deep for truths and uncovering things and healing. And so now that you have that gift that you have from your healing or the gift that you have from going inside and being an eternal, you know, well, internal, <laughs> not eternal, internal, um, now you're able to come, kind of come out of the water and and it is that kind of, that birthing aspect that you know we have the contraction and then we are expelling you know um, the energy or the baby all of those kinds of things so think of uh, when you're communicating that's what's happening you you've been thinking about for the last couple of weeks what it is that you want to communicate how it is that you want to be in the world and now you're like coming out saying you know like here I am and this is what I have so we also have this aspect um, to to Sag because it is Jupiter ruled and Jupiter is about expansion and having things bigger and abundance and and just like the like the large aspect of everything there is this quality to you know as you're telling stories as you're telling your narrative to you know expand on your narrative it reminds me of this movie called Big Fish I think it's a Tim Burton movie and it was about this father who had all of these like tall tales and we all have that like one uncle or that one person in our family that like you know, and at my age, when I grew up, I, you know, it, I was walking to school like 25 miles and it was really like a five, three to five mile walk, you know, that kind of like larger than life personality, larger than life stories. So there is that quality to like telling your narrative. And so that makes me think a lot about like, what is your personal narrative? How would you, if you had to share your life story to your grandchildren or to like someone else, like what are the things that are coming up for you? What are the things in your life that have been most impactful that you would share to someone else? And if you feel like you have a narrative that you're not proud of, or if you feel like you have a narrative that you don't really um, you're like, this is where I am right now, but this isn't really where I see myself. You know, I'm inviting you to change that narrative. So it is about narratives. It is about storytelling. It is about things that are larger than life. It's about optimism. It's about manifesting the story that you want. And But you're really coming from a place where you're speaking it into existence. And so that's what like this time, I think, uh, with Mercury and Sagittarius is all about. On the macro level, I think we're going to probably see some things, you know, potentially maybe with religious leaders or spiritual leaders, you know, people coming out and saying things, hopefully to, you know, um, bring people together at this time. I know there's been so much division and there's been so many things that have happened in 2020, which really makes people feel very isolated. I think we're going to start to see a movement of really trying to bring people together. And we're going to see more people who are in these philosophical spaces, religious spaces, spiritual spaces, really stepping up for that and stepping 
stepping up for like kind of a communal type of way of, of doing things. And that's just the case anyway, because Jupiter is going to be moving into Aquarius and Saturn also is going to be moving into Aquarius. And that's um, Aquarius is all about thinking about the collective. So we have been in this Capricorn space, which does tend to be a little bit more. Well, what am I doing? Me and my family, like, you know, you know, my rights, my country, my, my, you know. And so Aquarius is more like, how are we all doing? How is everybody doing? Are the choices that we're making for ourselves and for the planet like going to benefit all of us? So we're going to start to see movement in that way. And I think we'll start to see those kind of leaders pop up and talk a little bit more about that. Um, let's see. I think that was it for my notes for like Mercury and Sagittarius. So we will move on to Venus trining Neptune. So I'm really, really, really liking this particular transit. That is happening on December 5th. And uh, that, so that's this weekend. So whenever, um, so Neptune is in Pisces, Venus is still in Scorpio. So we're dealing with like a lot of water energy at this time. And that's going to feel so good for a lot of us. I mean, for me, you know, like, I think I want to really like it because I love when we're in a water space on the weekends. I live by the water. So I think that's just going to be a great time. And it's, it has this like kind of romantic quality, this quality fairy tale like quality. You know, Neptune has a lot to do with like fantasy and the way that we see things. Also some sense of obscurity, um, also having to do a little bit with um, our dreams and our creativity. Uh, Neptunian energy has that kind of like if we if we think of the waters of um, of, of, of Scorpio energy for example um, the waters where you're kind of digging deep into kind of the dark um, into the shadow to try to figure out what's going on there so you're bringing that up to light I like to think of like Piscean waters um, you know um, it, while Pisces is in Neptune as digging into um, this like collective consciousness of creativity and so it's going to be a lovely lovely time for creatives out there and you guys know I love you guys all you artists and creatives so for people that are into music or people that are into visual arts like pulling out your paints um, pulling out your guitar or your ukulele like we have here or your piano or just like calling up a friend on zoom and singing or anything that has to do with like creating beautiful art and really just kind of working with other people to do that that I think is such a beautiful thing it could be um you know everybody you know creating a video and then stringing the video together and sending it to somebody or what whatever that looks like because venus is all about relationships is all about people a lot of times people think it's you know like just love and romantic relationships but it's really like our family relationships our friend our relationships with our friends anything that we're in relationship to things that are beautiful things that are artistic and so i think when we get this particular transit it's going to be a lovely time for artists who have been struggling a lot during 2020 to feel that that sense of if you felt like disconnect from your creativity if you felt like this is we're living in such a heavy space and we have so much negative energy going on and just because we have a couple of things that are shifting doesn't mean that we're still not dealing with the pandemic still not dealing with high numbers still not dealing with unemployment that is record right now and all of the things that are happening but we do have these little peaks you know where where the light shines in where when those times happen we definitely want to look towards the light and live in that space even though we know what's going on I think what's also interesting and what's going to be lovely about this time for for those of you who are givers and who like to um, help out people who are in need which there are a lot of people right now Piscean energy also has that quality of being a helper in a little bit of a different way um, than Virgo is I think Virgo is more so about like you know let me assist with that or what are the mechanics of it or what are the details and help Piscean is about service you know like how can I like what can I do for you uh, Piscean energy is when someone just had a baby they're the one that calls all the friends and says okay we're gonna do like a food train and everybody you know like you have Monday you have Tuesday it's like the person who will fully take care of you and of all of your needs at the time especially when you're in a space where you can't do it yourself so think like a home help nurse or hospice or things like that people that are especially hospice I feel like like that is like huge because you know when somebody's in that kind of middle place um, or any kind of doula work when you're taking someone from the spiritual realm into our physical realm or when you're leaving our physical realm going into the spiritual realm all of that is kind of very Piscean so 
now is a really beautiful time to, you know, do be of service. And I know we have the holiday season coming up. So a lot of people do that. And, you know, finding creative ways of doing that, since you might not be able to do the things that you did last year when we weren't under these restrictions and so forth. So, you know, kind of problem solving that so you can still like, you know, do the service work, you know, that feels good for you. In terms of relationships, I think that this is going to be like a really wonderful time to reconnect. Our, a lot of our relationships, especially romantic relationships, have been a little under the gun. Maybe there's been a lot of like truth that has been told that wasn't very kind or things revealed that you know people didn't know and there's been a lot of endings to things or taking space so I think now is a time where you can bring some of that magic back because that is also you know a Piscean thing like magic and and the things that are unknown um in in, in a kind of like um like an occult, but 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 more kind of like a light way. So working your love magic, and this is really a time for romance, you know, because we have two. Um, Neptune um, is in Pisces. Pisces is a water sign, and we also have Venus in Scorpio. Scorpio is a water sign. So anything that you can do that's like related to water. So if you want to like take your loved one out, or have like a fun, or even just like a fun family trip, or if you you know if if everybody's like working in the office and everybody wants to like meet up somewhere anywhere by the water and then there's like things like baths and tea and wine or anything that has to do with like liquid <laughs> in a way I think it's going to you know be a very meaningful space and a meaningful time for you to be with another person um so yeah so I think like just like live in that space and and have fun with that and you know it's not so much of like when we have this kind of um Venus trying um um Ah, Neptune. <laughs> Venus trying Neptune. We're not in that space so much of like heavy, like sexual energy as much as it is a sensual energy. It's more so about like love making. It's more so about connection. It's more so about like Tantra. It's more so about, so about like making love to the soul and, and that kind of deep love that you have for someone. So if you are a person who doesn't have anyone and you're not partnered right now and you're like, okay, I'm giving and I'm do I'm being of service, but I really want that in my life. Now is a really good time to think about what you want, who you'd like to bring into your life. Who is the idea of your ideal lover? Like who um, would be that romantic partner? What do they look like? What qualities do they have? What are some of the things that you would like to do um, with them? So this is a great time for like thinking about things and, and just really putting it out there into the universe or into prayer or into ritual or into um, any kind of like, you know, thing that you do to manifest what you want. Think about that. This weekend, this is a wonderful time to kind of think about what that looks like for you, what love, what being in love, what romanticism is for you if you don't have that in your life. And then thinking about creating a space for that to come in. So I'm a huge, huge advocate of um, manifestation isn't just about um, thinking about what you want and writing the list and then whatever kind of magical workings you're doing. It's really about carving out the space and the time in your life so that you can do it. Because being in a relationship does take a certain amount of time. It does take a certain amount of space. And if you're busy, 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 or if you're kind of like scattered and all over the place and your timing's all over the place and you just really don't, um, have yourself and your space set up to really have somebody in and have that relationship that you want whatever that looks like because relationships look so different for everyone like that it'll it's hard to bring that person in so it's almost like in a way um i feel like how couples when they're ready to have a child they will say okay you know we need to move to a bigger house because the baby's going to have their own room and and look at the baby room and they paint the baby room and then they get all the stuff in there and so a lot of times if, if couples have the time and the resources is they will create this space for baby and then start thinking about making baby. And so I feel that that could be the very same thing for you um, when you were trying to bring some romantic partner or some type of um, liaison in, into your life, creating that space for them to come in um, is just another way of calling them in. So thank you guys so much for joining me today um, for the Astro Chat Live, for what's coming up. Um, in the middle of December, we have so many things coming up, especially everybody's been hearing a lot about the Jupiter um, 
Saturn conjunction that's coming up. We have the winter solstice. We have new moon and full moon and all those things. So I'm going to have a lot more videos and I'll be kind of um, rolling out some more interesting things that I'll be doing in terms of having a membership site that I'm really excited for, um, for people to come and, you know, have like monthly horoscopes and have discounts on readings and just like, a, and, you know, going live just with the folks in our group. So I'm really excited to be bringing out more things in December and coming up into the next year. So if you guys have any questions, oh, thank you so much, Soul Healing with Roz. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining today. <laughs> um, but if you guys have any questions or anything like that, leave them. You can DM me or you can leave them in the comments. Comments is better. You can always email me at kaylani at thewildwahine.com. If you're interested, I do tarot readings and oracle card readings. I also do astrological readings. Um, right now, I'm just mostly doing birth chart readings, but I will have a lot more readings coming out in a couple of weeks as I roll out my brand spanking new website that I'm excited about. So <laughs> I will see you guys soon. Um, Wednesdays, I'm always here at 11 11 ish <laughs> um and you guys have a beautiful wonderful romantic sweet lovely weekend aloha mm -hmm.